So I wanted to upgrade the storage in my ThinkStation machine here. So this ThinkStation currently has an SSD that it boots from, but also a four terabyte storage drive. So I currently use that drive just for files, stuff that sort of helps out around the lab, various software, but that drive filled up really quickly. So I thought, okay, let me upgrade the storage in this, but also why not do a RAID array? So I figured a, a RAID one, super simple, mirror the data, that would be a really good foray into this topic for me. And when I was looking around for drives, I found these 12 terabyte drives. These are Western Digital Ultrastars. I think they're technically HGSTs based on the eBay listing. So I bought these from Go Hard Drive. $75 each, which is $5 cheaper than the same drive at server part deal. And these drives actually have a five year warranty. So they're seller refurbished, whatever that means. I'm pretty sure that they just run it through a test and send it on its way. But server part deals only have, I think it's a two year warranty. So I'm not really sure how Go Hard Drive gets all the way up to five years. Maybe they just have such a large quantity of these that they can send them whenever somebody sends one back to RMA. And I hear that their replacement process is simple. So I'm not really worried if I have any issues with these. I'm probably going to be able to get a replacement fairly easily. So these drives have been sitting here undergoing tests for the past week. And I'm not exaggerating. Um, I did a bad blocks test on each one. So that just does four rounds of writing to the disks and then reading it all back to verify that there's no bad blocks. That took six days. And then I did a long smart test, which it, that took 24 hours, I believe. So that's about a seven day turnaround on each of these drives. And they both checked out fine, no errors. They both have under 35,000 lifetime hours on them which is basically what was guaranteed uh, by the seller. So these are just some good working used drives. Hopefully I don't have one fail and then have another week to sort of rebuild the RAID array. But yeah, I have to take the two drives that are currently in the Think Station using, I believe they're mounted with like double-sided tape right now. I'm gonna have to take those out of where they currently are, pop these two drives in in an actual reasonable mounting setup, and then at least put my boot SSD back in there. I'm gonna take that older four terabyte drive out, but I'm probably gonna to have to do a little creative mounting. So let's just get right into it. I'm gonna pop the cover off of this thing station, take a look at what we're dealing with, and then try to find out how I'm gonna mount these drives. Okay, so I have the side panel off of this thing. So you can see right here, I have a Kingston SSD. You can sort of see here that I have a hard drive. Let me flip this out, makes things pretty easy here. Um, yeah, so you can see that hard drive is very poorly secured with uh, some double-sided tape. Um, cable management in here I mean, it's not organized, but it's definitely manageable. There's a lot of room to work around. If we look down here, you might be able to make it out. So there's four SATA ports here. And I don't see much in the way of extra power connectors, but let me dig around here a little bit. I do have some SATA power splitters for mounting options. I have these little adapters for uh, three and a half inch drives to get them to five and a quarter. So I believe this, this might be a three and a half inch mounting point and this might be five and a quarter up here. So hopefully I can make something work out here. But yeah, I'm not entirely sure how this is all gonna come together. So let me take these drives out put these new ones in, and then I will put the camera back on after everything is situated. 
So this is just sort of an interim update while I'm getting everything here in order. You could see that I have both of the drives now mounted in this sort of drive plane that folds out or whatever you want to refer to it as. So I added the spacers on this drive so that they could accommodate the five and a quarter bay. But it seems like even with those spacers, it's still not wide enough. And this bay down here, even though it's supposed to be for three and a half, that is also still too wide to accommodate the drive. So I'm pretty sure these are meant to be used with some sort of caddy that I don't have and are probably prohibitively expensive. So I just did what I had done before and I'm using this very strong double-sided tape to make sure that the drives are actually staying in here. So right now they're vertical. So the, uh, the tension you could say on the tape isn't great, but when I fold this back down, this machine is gonna live in the closet on its side anyway. So these should just naturally, due to gravity, just be resting on the tape. So it shouldn't be too big of a deal. It's mostly just to kind of get away from vibration as well as I don't want any of the metal contacting uh, with the PCB. So it's just gonna be in there to just be a little snug. So one other thing that I have learned is that these drives, they utilize, I believe it's the third pin on the power connector, which has this sort of power off signal these days. I think that this is some standard from 2016 where they use that third pin. And if there's 3.3 volts and it pulls it high, then it shuts the drive down. But you don't have to have this logic in there provided that you're using an old enough computer that doesn't use the 3.3 volts or you're using a cable that doesn't have that voltage going through it. There's no wire for it. So luckily this computer is old enough. I believe this is 2013 or so. And the technology is much later. So the actual stock SATA power cable here only has four conductors. So I should just be able to plug this directly into the drive itself. I'm actually using right now these uh, adapter cables that came with the drives because at the time I didn't know how that technology worked. So I'm definitely able to take this connector out here and then plug this right in. But the issue I have with this drive is that I'm using their adapter and it's going into a splitter here. So down below, if I give you a really bad angle of this, you can see my SSD is just kind of dangling down there. So I have to have that SATA power splitter here to power both this drive and the SSD. And the thing that I realized is that this connector here, because it's not one of these 90 degree connectors like we see over here, I actually can't get this metal piece to close fully and I didn't have any SATA power cables that have the 90 on it, or should I say extension cables. So I have to order some of those. I'll get, I think I just need one to put here and then into the splitter. The SSD that's down there, I'll probably end up double sided taping that to the, um, the case here at the bottom. So if we look here under the PCIe card, it's pretty empty, I'll just put something down there. But this one, I think I can just take this cable out, plug the, um, the power coming out of the power supply right into it, and that one's good to go. But I do need that right angle connector. And so just looking in here, I, I know I said cable management was pretty good. It's actually not now that this is all flipped out, but there's not a lot of cleanup that can be done here with these cables, I don't think. I'll probably end up doing something to sort of tie down the SATA power splitter and other than that, I'm definitely going to blow this out to get rid of all the dust. There is a like a 90 millimeter fan back there that's actually very quiet that's pulling in air from the front. Um, I know normally I would probably want to put a Nocto in there, but honestly, this thing is so quiet, I can't even justify it. But maybe one day in the future. So for, for now, I just need to clean this up, tape the SSD in there, and sort out my little right angle state of power extension cable when that comes in. So hopefully very soon this will all be sort of cleaned up, tucked in and ready to put the, uh, the side of the case back on.
we're back after I blew everything out here. Everything's closed up, powered it on, everything's still working here. Um, showing you this from a different angle so you can see two hard drives in and the SSD is mounted down here with some double-sided tape. It, it was a little bit of a tight squeeze getting it in there with this header connector, but it tucked in pretty nicely. So yeah, at this point we're ready to get started with the RAID. I, uh, while I was in here and cleaning everything out, I noticed that I only have two of the RAM slots populated, so that's a total of 8 gigs of DDR3, so two 4 gig sticks. So because this is a Xeon, I looked up and um, I'm going to get some ECC RAM for this. And I'm going to do two 8 gig sticks, which leaves me two open slots, so I could upgrade this to 32 gigs in the future, but I probably don't even need that. I don't even know what I would do with more RAM in this system, but it was 20 bucks for 16 gigs at ECC, and I've never had ECC before. So I thought, why not? I'll go for it. Um, I'm also trying to think of what else I could put in these PCI and PCIe slots here. So I have two PCIe slots and one PCI slot. I think that these are PCIe 16 slots, it's whatever the standard long one is. Can't remember that off the top of my head. But so I have two PCIe and a PCI slot. The only caveat is that this only accommodates half height cards. So if you can think of some weird stuff to put in here, I don't know, like a TV tuner or something, maybe I could do some weird stuff in the future with this box. For right now, I can't really think of anything, but do let me know if you think of anything that would fit in this form factor and might be fun to throw in here. But yeah, this thing all cleaned out, everything's installed. You might have noticed that the, the foam here around the cooler took a bit of a hit, but this, this foam's not in great shape anyway, and I'm not too worried about the airflow. This thing runs pretty cool as it is. But yeah, I'm gonna button this back up, put the, the cover back on, and then we'll get on to setting up the RAID. Okay, so now that we finally have the drives installed in the system, let's use FDisk to see our new drives. Okay, so we can see SDC and SDB are our new drives, whereas SDA is our old boot drive. So perfect, so we're gonna be using B and C going forward. So now let's use parted. Target it SDB first. And we will set the um, partition table for these drives. Um, so let's use GPT because we have large drives here. So this should work for our first drive. Yes. Now let's do the same for SDC. Great. So now that these drives are ready, we can go back to FDisk again. Okay, so we're going to do a new um, partition on each drive here. So partition number one, we'll use defaults for first sector and the last sector. So we can print out the partition that it made. Okay, so this is currently a Linux file system partition, but we want to set this to a RAID type. Uh, so if we do T and 29 is RAID, and if we print it again, we'll see it says Linux RAID. So let's go ahead and write these changes. And then we can quit out of this and do the same um, for SDC. So again, we'll do new, one, defaults. Change it to 29. Then we will write it, and that's all set. So now we're going to actually want to install the software that creates the, the Linux software RAID, which is MDADM. So I do sudo apt install MDADM. We'll install that.
So now that we have MDADM installed, we can actually use it to create our RAID array. So if we do sudo MDADM create devmd0 level will be mirror RAID devices will be 2 and then we specify our partitions. Continue creating array. Yes, we're not going to be using this for boot. So creation is now started. So let us do a check here. So we can see that we have an active RAID and that resync is at 0%. Uh, so this RAID is just created, so it's going to do an initial sync, which is going to take quite a long time, maybe like 14 hours or so. Uh, but then it'll be active, ready. We can still use it in this state, it's just any writes are going to be a little bit slower because it is doing this initial sync. Not too big of a deal. So let's go ahead and actually create our file system. So we use mkfs ext4 and specify for dev md0. So now it'll go through the process of creating everything. Okay, it's completed. So let's go ahead and mount this. Uh, first, let's create a new directory. We'll call it RAID0. And now we can mount. So we're mounted, so Let's take a look at that. So we can see we have 11 terabytes available. Now this isn't going to be persistent. So we're going to want to make sure that we save everything so that it will come back up. So first let's save our config. So this just saves it to the conf file in Etsy MDADM. Okay, we save it there. Uh, we'll also go ahead and update init RAM FS. So this should just make it available earlier in boot. And now we also want to add it to our fstab. So normally you can use the device itself, like device MD0, to mount. But with the way that MDADM works, it's not always guaranteed we'll have that device. So it's better to use the unique identifier. So if we do bulk ID, so we can see here we have this UUID. So we'll copy that, and then we'll edit our fstab. So you can see here at the bottom, I already have an entry set up, sort of stubbed out. But we're going to replace this with our UUID. 
and get rid of these. So most of this is pretty straightforward. We're going to mount to RAID 0. We're using ext4 as the file system. Mount to with defaults, but also no fail. So if it fails to mount the RAID for whatever reason on boot up, it won't halt boot up. So we'll save that. And now we're ready to go. So if I reboot this, it should bring the RAID back up. And now I have an 11-ish terabyte RAID that I can fill with data. So this is probably far from complete from the perspective of me being done with this RAID. Um, I'm definitely going to fill it up, but also it's good to have some sort of uh, smart checks implemented that run periodically for the drives. There's probably also a RAID test I can have to make sure the RAID is functioning. And then send alerts back to me just to make sure everything's operating okay. But for now, this is how to get a quick mirrored RAID 1 set up on your system just using two drives in software, no frills. And yeah, it's great to do just to have a little bit of data redundancy. So that's it for this video. I'll uh, be sure to loop you all in if there's any other interesting RAID projects coming down the pipe.